Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the show from the hard disk and a great memory from LA with TV star Barry Weiss who achieved global fame with the great series Storage Wars. Last time I bought an appliance, there was a real human kidney on ice in it. Professional massage table. I wonder if this unit will have a happy ending. I don't really want to spill this everywhere. So Barry became a breakout star pretty much straight away and very well known around town for his awesome collection of cars. And it was a car that brought us together. On a random night in LA, I saw a movie, we went to the House of Pies afterwards, and in the car park, I saw this incredible car. And I'm not really in the cars that much, but this thing was just insane. I got to meet Barry and told him about the show that I make and asked him if he'd like to film something. And if you're wondering why he's got a ponytail in some of this footage, it's because it was a year or two before Storage Wars started. But a great adventure randomly began. I wore your favorite socks, Toxie. You gonna shot him? Huh? Come on. You know the ones you like. What is that? Fuck my socks off. <laughs> That's the ones you want me to wear. <laughs> That rash ears go away. I mean, we were pretty concerned last night. I mean, you gotta let that ointment work. It takes a couple of days. Nothing works overnight. Yeah. Yeah, an absolute character from the get go. And I wanted to ask him about driving the car and how safe he felt behind the wheel. It's not one of those kind of cars where you can pretty much like steer with your knee, roll a joint with one hand, drink some <laughs> Avion water. You know what I mean? You know, talk on the phone. Uh, no. <laughs> this one for the most part. It requires a lot of concentration. Well, about 100%. So on our drive around West Hollywood, this happened. And not... Sorry? Hey, uh, do you guys know, um, I work for Power Quip. I'm a loop company. Do you know who I talked to around here about some diesel generators? Wow. Uh, I don't exactly. I mean, I really don't have a diesel generator on this car but you know what look there's a psychic uh, reader place she would know who you would talk to well, get a shot of it Toxie well, well, no but it may be worth it to go in there and ask the psychic, the psychic where you know uh, yeah, I mean they're selling two diesel generators so. I see but there's the psychic reader the chick knows everything about everything give it a shot I wish I could help you, brother. See ya. So as you can see, the car is just absolutely amazing. And when people are driving by, they're pulling their phones out, filming video of it. It gets everybody sort of looking. Uh, just a piece of artwork on four wheels. Incredible. But this is what I love about the show. We went inside to grab some food. And randomly, this guy came in wearing a Jesus outfit. And uh, Barry being Barry, he sat down and we filmed this chat. First of all, we're here with Michael. Michael, my pleasure. Nice Barry, to meet you. are you afraid of me? No. Why are you shaking? Oh, no. <laughs> Michael, it's an old guy. All right, we recently met Michael, and when I say recent, I mean what? Two minutes? Yeah, I popped by, I saw your car, and I had to come in and find out who the owner was. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate that compliment. What's this? Oh, thank you thank for this you guy. Much. Look at this. Awesome. Look at this. Have a blessed day, dude. Thank you very much. Look at you. You're going to walk out of here stuff, buddy. Yeah, yeah. All right. Enjoy. Yeah. But the main purpose of our little chat, and we're with Togsy, who has a show in Australia. What's up, Togs? Hey. You just popped in. We were, we're sitting in Jan's coffee shop, and you just popped in. And, uh, you know, first of all, I was... An interesting uh, ensemble you're course, wearing. Of course, I like to be, you know, eclectic, you know. No, I can see that. Man. Do me a favor, stand up and just do a quick little 360 so we can catch your your deal. Not that fast. I mean, let everybody. Right. You're so. dressed as a uh, Latter Day uh, Saint, uh, Jesus. It's a Jesus theme. It is. It is. It and is. it works for you. I'm totally promoting the name. Right, and and I also like the fact that you've got a little bit of the. Uh, Mardi Gras jewelry. That you Mardi got. Gras slash Pirates of the Caribbean slash invention of a cigarette holder, which I'm going to give a copyright away from and hopefully make somebody a million dollars. All right, so you're a multitasker, is oh, what you're course, saying. All right. Yeah, so Michael was telling us all about his journey to LA and the fact that he wants to be a singer in a band. So we stepped outside, and here he is. 
footsteps drum beat listen to me and just use your feet close your eyes and feel surprised cause we can fly through time and other void this temple of mine join hands and we can journey to distant lands remember you're a dream of light search deep and catch the dove in flight so listen to my voice and cry out in the night we gotta try we gotta fight lose your fears and lose your fright come with me and enter the Always super random and always super fun. And a few months later, I was back in LA, but this time Barry said, you know what, man, I've got heaps of people we should film with. You can come stay with me. So I took him up on the offer and our adventure began our first night. Yeah, we were straight into it and Barry had some friends over from Europe that I think they ran a car magazine or something like that. They were getting footage of the car, taking video and pics, so I went with them. And uh, yeah, the adventure pretty much began. I had no idea what was going on, but always a laugh. Struggling with the cold, first night in LA. I uh, you know what? Where are we? In well, actually we're in what's uh, called Toluca Lake, California, near Burbank. And this place was... Uh, Built in 1949, and the interesting thing about it, it's obviously still around today and healthy as ever. That was the famous logo, and people would kind of remember the logo from the movie uh, Austin Powers that was uh, used in it. I don't know that there's any correlation, but he used it. But people have been coming here on Friday nights and cruising um, in hot rods and stuff since 1949. Yeah, so it was fun to walk around. I remember it being freezing cold, but uh, all the people checking out everyone's cars, Barry's car proving very popular, and it didn't take us long for Barry to find some people to chat with. Oh, cool, it's a speedster. With the original patina. Is your shopping cart? Yeah. Is that a hugger? Pardon? Yeah, to Cadillac. Thanks a lot. I love your car. I like your shopping cart, too. We're, uh, I never see you here. This is our first time we came by. Yeah, what's the occasion? Just getting out. We're newly single. Yeah. Both of you? Yeah. Whoa. I know. So okay. Big night. Yeah. Well, you're starting it here, huh? <laughs> exactly. With the chili fries. Yeah, really with the chili fries. I was going to say, yeah. But, you know. It'll be hell in the bedroom later, man, with those chili fries. Small price to pay. Put on the asbestos sheets, baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get to know a person quickly that way, you know. Right, right. You know, normally, Basically farting on the that. first date's not cool. You but gotta go three or four dates before you, you they fart. They stick around and call you after, you know they're a keeper. So it was fun meeting the ladies and always a laugh with Barry, especially when you go inside to eat. I just want to say that uh, my buddy Andrew here is, uh, is uh, 25 years old tonight. I'd like to have everybody just wish him a happy birthday. He's come out of the closet or the cupboard, whatever it is, and he's good with it. Let's give him a big hand. <laughs> Oh my God, can you imagine? It was absolutely crazy. And before we left, Barry wanted to put a show on for his magazine pals. There's never a dull moment, that's for sure. And the very next day, Barry said, I want to take you over to meet my friend Baron, who makes these incredible rocket bikes. And I'm going to show you these really steep hills and we'll take the hot rod. So it was pretty crazy to jump in this little beast and uh, set off on another fun adventure. Get a shot here as we run into this bus. Get in there. Ah! Get that? Good. You see these hills? When you go over them in a car, yeah. you can't see over the other side. Streets are so steep. That is one massive hill. I told you, man. 
Yeah, he wasn't joking. So steep that the news did a story on it. So I'm just going to stand here and show you the street. I can walk this way. I won't walk up it too much because it is very steep. City officials say this is a 33% uh, grade, but look at how steep it is. And when you get to the top, you can't see what's on the other side. So, so as we made our way up in the hot rod when we turned the corner, man, I was packing it. Baxter. Oh, fuck. Dude. <laughs> it's like a roller coaster, oh, Jack. Man, that is crazy. Isn't it? Yeah. We used to get my pair on motorcycles and oh. stuff. This is steep, man. You can't even see over the top. <laughs> Very one. bumpy too. Oh. Yeah, here's another one. <laughs> not a good place to finish your brakes. Not, not a good place, no. no. You don't have a handbrake in this either, do you? Nah, it's not perfect. I'm serious. Yeah, maybe we should be gentle with it from now on. We are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dead, aren't we? Oh, you would be. <laughs> yeah, so if you're ever in Echo Park, I recommend you go up and down those hills. It's pretty crazy. Good fun indeed. It was time now to meet Baron Margot. This guy is a genius. These rocket cars and rocket bikes and all kinds of incredible artwork. And when we arrived, I asked him if he wouldn't mind taking one of his bikes for a spin to show us. inspiration come for say this Do my machine artwork. here yeah uh, you know it's just an extension of my artwork and uh, I took it a step further where I do things that you know that I could actually I ride art pieces that are you know like my artwork my submarines <laughs> Jules Verne submarines uh, but you know these I can ride do you ever get to a point where you think when you when you're building something like this that maybe you can't ride it? does it ever get to a point where you go too far with the art or you always think you can get on there and have a spin around. Yeah. I'm always thinking, I'm building it because I want to ride it. I'm not building it just, you know, a pretty thing to stick in the corner somewhere. Yeah. I'd like all of them to be functional. To me, they're no really, they're not, they're no use if, they, if they're not functional. <laughs> they're most so amazing. How long did it take you to do this? This, they take, it takes about a year per vehicle that I do. I've done about four or five motorcycles and about three, four cars. Right. So. Awesome, man. Yeah, so great fun hanging out with Baron and getting to see some of his work and just his house in itself should be like a little museum. I mean, it's incredible from outside to the inside. It's like an incredible film set and it was great to uh, spend some time with him and ask him some questions. How did you get involved in art? How did it all come about for you? I, I always uh, collected cars when I was young. I always had two or three automobiles I was working on and then it just, you know, evolved around other stuff. Like what advice do you have for people out there that maybe dream of doing art and creating but sometimes they doubt themselves? Do you have any advice for people out there that want to create? Yeah, just get a space. It doesn't have to be a garage. It's just a space that you need and you can build it. I build cars and motorcycles right in my driveway. I don't have a fancy workshop. Don't let that discourage you not having a you know really nice fancy because I see guys with incredible garages with every tool that you can imagine and they're not working on a project and that to me is that hurts me. When I see right. that, okay. but I don't have a space or a giant works, but but I don't complain. I just build it wherever I am, wherever I can. Yeah, you know, outside, indoors, the driveway, front yard, whatever. Absolutely awesome. Great to meet you here in your place, and thank, thank you, you, sir. Too. Come again.
super fun to film with, that's for sure. Now, that night we organised to meet British porn star Alexis Silva. Barry wanted to take us to the Dresden, a place made famous by the classic film Swingers. What do you say, man? You can tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. Is it loud and the woman wore my best picked around the sound with born on the right? It's okay, you can look the other way. You can try to understand. Say a pound of face that way. Whether you remember the question about the word stay alive, stay alive. Be the city shaking, everybody breaking out, stay alive, stay alive. Ah, 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 stay alive. Yeah, Marty and Elaine play every night, and it was great fun to film a chat with them. Where are you from? I'm from Australia. I thought so. We've never had Australia interview us at all. We did had Belgium recently. Oh, the first one. Yeah, you're the yeah, first one. Out. You're the first. Yeah, so always fun being the first, and uh, great to ask them about some magic memories, including the night Frank Sinatra came in. When he walked in, I was so scared, I started to sing, and went, and played and so for three weeks I hated myself then he came in and he put his hands on the spinet three weeks later and said go ahead kid and I was singing and I never sang better in my life That's I was amazing. so mad at myself for being a coward <laughs> and uh, when I finished he was clapping and he walked around the room telling everyone to clap going bravo making everybody clap and I everyone he threw me a kiss and everyone congratulated me because he usually throws bands out but <laughs> Then, when he, when he was leaving, I walked right past him and I said, Oh, thank you for throwing me a kiss because everybody's congratulating me. And he said, Well, uh, you know, I never kid around about music. You earned it. He said, and he kissed me on the cheek and said, It's too important. So after a fun night out, Alexis came back to Barry's place and we filmed an interview in the bathroom. Yep, as you do. And what's your profile like in the UK? Because do you get recognised or anything like that? You must have a lot of fans over there. No, bigger. I'm bigger over here in the States. Wow. Um, I get people, I get guys like double taking at me, but I don't know if that's for any reason. I suppose when you're in the media, you sort of wonder. Right. You know, so I always wonder, oh, is it because he knows who I am or is it because of something else? But, you know, I've had a couple of guys saying, oh, my God, I've just seen you on TV. And I'm like, oh, great. But um, I think a lot of guys are kind of embarrassed to come up and say oh i know you're a porn star because then it's they're admitting to the fact that they watch porn yeah i think so maybe which we all kind of do well yeah i mean let's be honest <laughs> you know so the next day barry had another random adventure planned we were off to san francisco but this time he had some friends in tow joe pro from boston and jack luna from san fran and unfortunately jack passed away since we shot this so it was an honor to meet him and to capture some of this footage and on the plane from LA to San Francisco, I got a chance to ask Joe all about Barry. Probably, I've known Barry probably about 16, 17 years now. And I used to come out with a guy named Gene Shakov, who that movie Shampoo was based on. Yeah. And uh, Gene got a little bit older, and then Barry and I started hooked up. And he says that when he come out to LA for the, the this big love ride out there called uh, that Jay Leno does uh, for handicapped kids. So when I come out, Barry said, "Stay with me." I says, "Oh, great, thanks, Barry." So we got the hook up, and then, and then in 1994, I had a cancerous brain tumor, and um, Barry called me out, and he says, "Hey, when you're feeling better, come on out, and uh, we'll do a little traveling together." So we went all over the United States on a couple of different buses. And then we started hitting Europe, Italy, Spain, Amsterdam, Holland, and then lately we've been, uh, we just come back like four months ago, and uh, we were in Brazil, Argentina, and Chile. Some fun adventures, right? Oh, unbelievable. With Barry, it never stops. It's just balls to the wall all the time with him. Go, 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 and just fun, fun, laughing all the time. So he's a great guy, and uh, like I said, uh, he's always helped me out, you know, because right now I'm on disability because, like I said, I had that brain tumor. So Barry's been great, always helping me out, just a super nice guy. Yeah, have you slept with Barry? Yes, I have. I've checked his oil three or four times. <laughs> So when we arrived in San Fran, we jumped in Jack's truck and drove an hour or so down to San Jose. There was a big bike thing on with uh, Arlen Ness. 
And like I said, I don't know much about cars or bikes, but this is pretty awesome walking around checking out some of these incredible bikes. But the funniest thing for me was having the camera ready when Barry gave Arlen his present. No, you're a golfer. A serious one, I might add. It's a buddy of mine from Australia. Say hello to Toxie. Hey, Alan. Toxie, how you doing? Here from you, Australia. Uh, run it all the way from L.A., buddy. I'm going to open it up for you. Okay. You, you. You're serious about your golf game, aren't you? I mean, does yeah, your putting yeah, need I, any I help? Better. No, this is a carbon <laughs> yeah. Kevlar. Okay. I got one for Corey. Let me open it up. Yeah. Carlin, let me just get a quick shot of this butter. There you go. See, no, that's going to help your game. I mean oh, my that. God. That's, that's for so Arlen. Cool. Go ahead. Look, get a picture oh, of Arlen. Oh, my God. That's, cool. <laughs> that's a carbon Kevlar head on that. And uh, look at that. Be prepared to take eight or ten strokes off your game, my friend. Yeah, only Barry would give a gift like that. But when we went outside, there was a big rally or something going on, and Joe thought he'd just step up and join in. I love that. <laughs> Always a laugh, that's for sure. Now, that night we went and checked out the motocross. Uh, an Aussie, Chad Reed, won the race. I think he was dominating the series at the time. And then the next day, a quick tour around San Fran with Jack. And how long have you been living here for? Uh, I've been here all my life. Born wow. and raised. I was born in Oakland and uh, raised in Oakland. Went to school in Oakland. And I hang out in San Francisco all the time. Love the city. It's amazing, isn't it? There's a lot of cool shit here, man. It's a lot of fun, but you kind of got to know it. If you're just a tourist, you come in, the tourist things aren't as much fun as the uh, little sleazy bars and stuff in the basements and that kind of stuff. It has a dirty underbelly. Right. As does any town. Yeah, that's Oakland on the other side. That's the Bay Bridge. Still the best car chase scene ever was Steve McQueen. Oh, over bullet? Things. Yeah. What a fucking scene. That, I mean, if you're really watching it, you'd think you're in the car. That's, to this day, the best chase scene ever. It is. I agree, Jack. And this is some of the scene from that famous movie, Bullet. So it was great driving around with Jack, especially down the famous Lombard Street. How'd you like to live on this street? Wow, oh, man. This is unbelievable. How about coming up and down on a bike and in this And then look way. at the views. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Wow. Wow. This is unbelievable. Huh, Andrew? <laughs> it's crazy, Check isn't this it? out, baby. Well, this is a good day. Usually this is like bumper to bumper traffic. Is it? Because tourists come here, you know, they want to come up and down this thing. Sure, right. There's Alcatraz. There's a great That's view. That's a great view. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. So much fun hanging with those guys, but the next day we flew back because Barry wanted me to meet the guys from Funky Junk Farms in Johnny, Stephen and Ed, and I got to meet Stephen and talk about some of the awesome trailers that they make. All kinds of incredible stuff, and we filmed a quick chat about it. And what's your background with this? How did you get into this? Well, I used to drag race cars and build exotic, crazy stuff, just cars and stuff like that. And uh, I was working with a buddy of mine on a show, and all of a sudden he said, hey, let's get into trailers. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I like started that, looking huh? into them, and all of a sudden here we are. Wow. With these old vintage style trailers. Okay. And uh, now we're, we, we, we started doing them just for ourselves, and, and somebody else said, hey, I want one. So we built one for them, and then all of a sudden started building them for clients. They, if they want something for a backyard cottage, we do it for them. If they want uh, something for a movie set to use as their dressing room, we build that. Yeah, so it was a great way to wrap up the adventure, meeting Steven, seeing all the cool stuff. Awesome fun hanging out with Barry. Of course, he had a big bike accident a few years ago. Thank God he's still here with us. And you wouldn't believe it, he's back on Storage War, so I'm sure it's going to be a huge season. We'll wrap it up with uh, me leaving the camera on and running just in time to hear one of Barry's awesome jokes. The National Poetry Contest had come down to two people, right? Mm -hmm. A redneck from Texas and a uh, Harvard graduate. And they were given a word, and the word they were given was Timbuktu. You realize that's a real place, right? Timbuktu, do you know that? It is. It I've is in it. Africa. It is. It's a real place. 
Okay. So they were given two minutes in which to integrate that word, Timbuktu, into a poem for the championship. First guy gets up, the Harvard graduate, he says, uh, slowly across the desert sands trekked a lonely caravan, men on camels, two by two, destination, Timbuktu. Crowd goes crazy. Now the redneck gets up there and he says, uh, me and Tim a hunting went, met three whores in a pop-up tent. They was three and we was two. So I bucked one and Tim bucked two. 